Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to uh, Pico 8 Hero. Welcome to our tutorial on how to make a roguelike in Pico 8. Now, on the last episode, we've been talking a little bit how to make use Google uh, Sheets to create some data for your game, to kind of manage the data a little bit more uh, conveniently. And now we're gonna, we did that, I did that in, in between the episodes and hopefully you did your homework too. And so we can now try to get our data into our game. Mm. By the way, also I'm I'm future Christian. I'm Christian who went through space and time to help Christian episode 42 um, with that one function. So now, with our knowledge that we game from the past, we are ready for the future. Um, let me let me show you real quick what I have. Bam. Okay, so here are here are the items I've created. Uh, as you can see, you can uh, you can use uh, Google spreadsheets to make like everything beautiful, so it's very, everything is a bit more clearer. Um, so um, I create a bunch of weapons. So one, two, three, four, five, six weapons with like increasing stats, uh, and then I have created a bunch of armors. Uh, same amount of armors, uh, six weapons, same six, six types of armors. Uh, I create a bunch of food items. Um, that I just call food one, food two, food three. Um, something I want to do that's going to be a bit fun. I'm going to actually uh, try to make procedural generated food names. Ooh, so you never know what the food does until, unless you eat it, like real food. Uh, and then we, uh, I created four uh, throwing items. Um, I'm not sure about the throwing items, um, and I think it's uh, kind of like important also to be like not to over obsess about getting the numbers right on the first try just like this is just like little first throw and we can can now then play the game with these kind of this is a good amount of number to for objects to operate with and we can then start tweaking and seeing what's wrong and right with those here are monsters um i just realized that i have to prepare them as well so these are like different types of monsters um, and you can see that um, player and slime I already had before, but now we have Melt, Shoggoth, Mantis Man, Giant Scorpion, Ghost, Golem, and a Drake at the very end. Now, before we import those bad, bad boys in here, oh, by the way, also maybe to explain, um, so each um, of those monsters um, is sticks around, I think, for th uh, three floors. And uh, each floor we introduce a new monster, so we, at any given point, I think we might have up to three different monster types on the floor. At the very first floor, it's just going to be the slimes. But on the second floor, the melts come in. And on the third floor, the shoggoths come, come in. And at, at this point, we have slimes, melt, and shoggoths, all three on the same floor. And so now our goal will be to kind of like to introduce kind of like the, a function that takes care of these kind of things that spawns the monsters on the right floors. But before we continue, uh, I want to lose uh, one sentence about this kind of game design. I think this is not good game design. Shocking, I know. Uh, I think this kind of like very um, traditional and, and very like vanilla type of RPG design that you see in every, any kind of game, uh, or a lot of RPG games, where you know, you're basically fighting the same monster over and over again. I'm then, I don't mean like visually. Of course, yes, a rat looks very different from a goblin, which looks very different from an orc, which looks very, very different from a, I don't know, cheese vampire, whatever you're fighting there. Um, but in terms of gameplay, um, battling all the different monsters in RPG often feels samey. It often feels the same, especially if you're overpowered. And you know, we, here we can get into ran, a rant how basically all of the RPGs are like overpower simulators. You're basically trying to break the game. And to some extent, battles in RPGs are not really challenges for you, even though they have a lot of mechanics going on. They're more kind of like the payoff. They're kind of like the part where it's like, yeah, you did it, you break our game. Now we can overpower all those monsters that we throw at you. And all of those monsters are meaningless now because you are so strong. How did you do it? How did you break our game? Did you level up? Oh, you're you're such a strong man. I don't like that that kind of like approach, and I think we should be kind of like critical a bit about the traditions that the um, um, tropes that kind of like crept um, crept into how we design RPGs today, especially RPG systems. Uh, but I, you know, as I said, that uh, this should be more of a vanilla type of RPG. So kind of like we start there, and I think that might be still a good starting point, and for us to later on discuss or think about better ways of um, creating enemies, creating items. So generally, 
uh, to finish this rant off, I want you to second guess this idea of ramping up enemies, like just tweaking numbers on enemies and making them have more health as you continue. Oh, this is now a big rat. This is now the vampire rat. This is now the, uh, you know, greater rat, you know. Um, so the same thing with weapons. Oh, this is a butter knife. I, I, I'm going to come to that later. Uh, we have a... We have items that start with one and then you get the better, the plus one sword and the plus three sword and plus four sword. And now the plus five sword of, of, um, of healing, whatever. Um, so instead of like creating just bigger versions of the same weapon that does the same thing, I think it's worthwhile to, for all of these things, for items and for, for monsters, to actually make sure or try to find ways of making them actually feel different. And that's difficult. And you will realize that it's no longer possible to generate like millions of items um, the way a lot of RPG have, or it's like a just bazillion of different swords that you can use in this game, and they're all basically the same sword with different numbers. Um, instead, like trying to come up with items that radically play very, very different and kind of like open up a new, um, a new avenue in your game. I kind of did it a little bit here, so you know, with the with the food, we have some gameplay um, attached to it. We kind of have like the more numbers you have to play around with, the more potentially you have to maybe use the numbers to make the item feel different. For example, in the armor, we have like the minimum um, amount of defense and the maximum amount of defense. So most of our armor is zero, but then you know the very far end armor has minimum defense of one and two. So this is a bit of a but it, it's. Mm. don't trust numbers to generate the gameplay for you. You kind of have to make sure that you're at the ground floor and watching exactly what is happening. Um, so not too much variation in this regard from the items, but we do have some variation on the monsters. So the monsters, I have like here a new um, column. Maybe I zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Can I zoom in? Yeah, I can zoom in. In the final column, I have something called special, which I will also export as a as a, a variable. That kind of like where we um, where I try to come up with some kind of mechanics that maybe um, will make those monsters behave slightly different. So, for example, uh, something I really want to do and that worked really well in the tutorial. I want the golem monster to be a very very strong monster. It's very difficult to be defeat. HP fourteen is that monster so even if you have like the meat cleaver the most uh, strong the strongest weapon equipped that does seven damage you still have to attack him twice to kill him that was uh, the idea that we kind of have like this very strong monster that is very very difficult to kill and he does you know five damage so we can like one one shots you if you have no armor um but the idea is that he will have a downside. He will be slow. So for every one move you may, uh, for every two moves you take, he will take one move. If he's walking, he will be attacking at the same speed. Um, so you can run away from that monster quickly. So that will kind of encourage you to maybe be more, more, um, more uh, mobile and try to kind of s s outrun the monsters instead of fighting them. There's another monster that I want to do. It's maybe not going to change too much on our gameplay, but here's a monster that is called the Giant Scorpion, and he will stun you. So he will, when he attacks you, you will skip a turn. And so this is going to be a monster that, especially if he, this monster is along with other monsters in the same room, um, he can easily um, stun you, and then other monsters will attack you or get closer to you. It's very a monster that, especially with other monsters, easily overpowers you. Um, it doesn't really change the gameplay that much radically, not as much as maybe the Golem Monster does, but um, but here is kind of like a maybe an approach. Like we're gonna see how this works. And again, it's very important not to get like over um, um, overthink the things and try to try to um, just throw out some things and see what works best. I have some other monsters, maybe some monsters are like the opposite of the golem, just really fast, move faster than you do, so you kind of, um, um, you kind of cannot outrun them, you have to kind of uh, face them very quickly. Um, some monsters might be manipulating the line of sight somehow, maybe you cannot see them until they're very close. Uh, and some monsters might spawn other monsters when you, when you kill them, or maybe they're not actually attacking you, just sitting there in the back and spawning monsters at you. So you kind of have to break through the line of, of the small monsters that are spawning to, can, to kill them. But the gray ones are things that I haven't not implemented in a, in a prototype, so I'm not, not really sure about it. Stun and slow, I did implement a prototype, so we're probably gonna go for that. Finally, there's a little detail that I want to talk about. I um, instead of like calling thing like instead of having like swords and stuff stuff like that stuff like that, um, 
I wanted to come up with um, some kind of like, I wanted to harken back to the theme of our original game. Remember, we are a pig and uh, we are in a dungeon and it's this court of pork like. Um, and it's really just about conjures images <coughs> of um, of <clears throat> of food and of of um, you know you kind of like you're being hunted basically because you're meat uh, or maybe there's some this idea that you're being hunted by humans because you're meat or or maybe you have to deal with your own mortality or your own own identity as an animal that is being eaten. So a lot of the stuff in here uh, is about. Uh, food. So what I did here is like all of the weapons are, are different types of knives <laughs> for eating knives. I mean the dining knives. So you begin with a butter knife and with a cheese knife, with a paring knife, then utility knife, chef's knife, and then finally the biggest weapon is meat cleaver, which I think is very appropriate. A pig with a meat cleaver seems like a like a pretty badass character. And the same thing with the armor. The armors are just aprons. So we start with paper apron, cotton apron, rubber apron, leather apron, chef's apron, and butcher's apron. Uh, the food is we're gonna figure out, and the f idea of my food is all the food was meat based, so all the, we're gonna randomly generate a meat based um, food, and this would be maybe an opportunity f for you to maybe like maybe some food will be vegan, and then there's going to be like a moral decision, and maybe you go for the vegan food, which might be maybe as weaker or maybe have like different different focus, so it's gonna be like this very important gameplay and moral decision whether you go vegan or not. I think it would be interesting. Um, and then finally, uh, the throwing weapons are forks. I'm not sure about this. Uh, maybe I will turn all of them into forks because the weakest throwing weapon is a spoon, which I really like the idea that you throw spoons at an enemy. Uh, and of course, uh, we could also... Oh, I, I th last time around I had it, I think I, I removed it. I think there was a spork at, at, <laughs> at some point in here. Um, maybe I should turn it into a spork. Let's turn it into a spork. Um, and so you throw with the, with the forks just to complete like the dining, the cutlery theme to, to all of this. Um, but I'm not sure about the forks because it makes sense that, that you're using a knife as a weapon, but it doesn't really make sense that you're throwing forks. So um, maybe plates because that's something that you rather throw. I'm not sure. It's fine. Um, so I will uh, share this with you. Oh, by the way, and um, so here are some like the different um, uh, food effects. So we have a healing food, uh, a food that heals a lot, a food that increases your maximum HP, a food that causes the stun status. That's something that we're going to talk about later. And then cursed and blessed um, are two types of different status that we're going to also talk about later. Right now, this won't do anything and will be at the very end that we implement those, those gameplay functions. And so, yeah, we can now get all of these things and you can see like all of the stuff, all of the, the huge arrays are just like exported in, immediately by our thing. And we can just copy and paste them in here. Bam. And look at the token count. It will increase slightly because you have some more items, um, but just ever so slightly. How cool is that? And we can even save more tokens if we put them in one in li one line. It's fine. It's fine. Right right now, it's I'm just I'm just glad to see this. Cool. We're not having any enemies because we turned it off. One thing after another. Before we start spawning enemies, there is uh, some things I want to go for. So first of all, ah, oh, that will feel so good. I mm, I did the math. Remember this function? It's time. This function is look. We are gonna actually save. I think a token here. Let me let me let me see if we do. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, so five seven six one. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, local local dx dy equals d dot x comma d dot y. And now we can remove all of the dots here. And if we do the math, if we did the math correctly, we will actually save a bunch of tokens. It's gonna be glorious. We saved three tokens. Take that. I'm so glad. Done. There is another thing I, I learned uh, from in the Discord. 
you should check out our Discord. People in Discord are so smart. I love it. So some people suggested to me that um, here in the explode function, yeah, we have the explode function. There's, there's like this um, two val thing where we do, here's something that we do that's kind of weird. We're going i plus zero, i plus zero. That's weird. Uh, we do that in order, to, in order to convert the i, which is gonna be a string, to a number. Just by adding a number to it, it will turn magically a string into a number. And that's the old way of doing things. But apparently something you can do these days is just go to val, to num. <laughs> that's something that was eventually introduced and I just missed it. Uh, it was introduced one of the Pico 8 versions and I just missed it, but now it's, it, it works. It's, it's a thing you can do and I think that's a good idea because now it's no longer this weird hack. Uh, people talk, um, ask about the floor thing. I was getting weird bugs and that's why the floor is in here. Maybe you can get, a, get around without the floor, but if this will ever cause any bugs, yeah, see? What's that? Is that, is that, yeah, it's, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Not sure why. And if I do the floor here, that works. Maybe some, something about the explode function doesn't really work properly. Maybe sometimes it um, retains a comma. Not sure what, what exactly is happening, but the floor definitely solves that problem. Right, when I went back, remember when I went to the past to help Christian from episode 42? Well, I uh, there was this thing I wanted to do, but I couldn't do back then because it was the past and you're not supposed to change the past. But now that we're in the, in the, in the, in the present, we can change it. We're gonna go if uh, m get, uh, this um, equals zero. And also something that we actually did in the past, but we haven't carried over is this part. Um, so basically we, we're checking that we only decorate the room manipulating tiles that are empty. And we never manipulate tiles that are not empty. Um, this is fine here, but I think once we did a check here into carpet, I think, right? Uh, oh, oh, actually we didn't. Mm. Yeah, here we did. In a, so we were even super inconsistent about this. Definitely with the forens. And here as well. Oh, there's an end here. You know, uh, something that we could do, it's not really necessary, but maybe it might be, might be worthwhile. So we're gonna get the, um, all the different arrays here, tar uh, dirt equals and tar um, farn, farn, fern, fern, farn. <laughs> I'm not sure if farn is correct. I think Amanda mis miswrote it, um, misspelled it, miswrote it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna grab, grab, grab these guys out on vase, right? Um, so this is farn, tar. Vase. I'm gonna grab these out. So this was farm, this is dirt. And so we don't do it just once when we decorate the room and not every time on every frame. I think that's 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 probably a good idea. And then you don't need to do the here, just farm. And here is gonna be dirt. And here is gonna be vase. And we don't need this in here. Okay. Let's try that. not working. <laughs> ah, 
Aha, now it works. Good. The oh, by the way, oh no! I oh, hopefully you've seen what I'm, I'm working on. Oh, I didn't switch switch the thing. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. I'm not going to re-record this part. Um, if you missed something, just check the code in, at the end of the episode. Oh no, this is really... I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah. Oh, I have to... Uh, I really like how... Or it's really funny how the rooms with the vases are very really unpredictable. <laughs> it's causing me a lot, of, a lot of joy. See, something we might... Um, we might do to kind of like because the problem is the f the room for the with the va with the vases it really depends on already a vase being next to it and if there is no vase next to it it the chances for it spawning is going to be very slim and it starts at top row which and top row is um already kind of like because we're not starting at the very edge of the room but like one beneath because the very top edge is the 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 line with the wall tiles on it that we can overlap. So uh, if we go through this backwards, we might get more predictable results with the vases. Like so, let's try. Maybe. Yeah, but still if, if still if you don't have like a if you don't get a vase then a vase going then then it's it's gonna it's always difficult to start one going um if to, there's like a, like a chaining f a f thing that happens with the vases so if it places a vase there's a tr uh, there is a chance that some vases will spawn around it but if the uh, random number generator throws a number that you know that so no vases start spawning then subsequently the, the other vases are automatically banned from being spawned no matter what the what the number number generator throws in because a vase always spawns next to unwalkable tiles it's fine it's fine all right, so I want to now talk about how to spawn the different mob types that we have. First of all, let us bring back the mobs because we are not spawning the mobs yet. Spawn mobs, okay. Okay, so here is in the spawn mobs function. So how are we going to find, like, how are we going to pick the right mobs for the individual floor? We are going to use something that, um, and not, not, again, like a very similar pattern that we used before, where we're going to go, mob, we're going to create a pool of mobs to pick from. A pool of mobs. And we're going to fill this pool with all mobs that are valid for this one floor. And then we're going to use the get rent function, just get a random mob from the pool of mobs that are valid, so to speak. So we're just gonna get mob pool here and we're gonna go for i equals one to mob name. Um, actually, we're gonna start at two because we don't wanna play spawn the player mobs, do. And then we're gonna check if mob min foo, that's this is a new function. This is basically something that we exported from our, from our there is minf, item minf, mob minf, the, the first floor at which this mob may spawn. Um, if this is smaller or greater than floor and, and of course, max f is greater Or equals floor then just like making sure then we add this mob to the pool and then um, we previously I had like this little check that make sure that if the pool is empty we're not gonna do anything we could be like if um, hashtag mob pool equals zero then return If the pool is empty, we're not just gonna, not going to do anything. Uh, but this is like an optimization that actually is not really necessary because it, this is just something that checks against if we messed up with the data that we put in. We haven't messed up with the data, so I'm, 
I don't really think that we need that. That's fine. Okay, moving on. Um, so, um, yeah, minions three. That's kind of like how many minions we have to spawn, right? Yeah, uh, min mobs. We call this min mons, min minimum monsters. Okay, that's that's fine too. Um, that's something we're gonna maybe change. But maybe uh, we're gonna want to actually have more monsters as we're moving through the level. Um, but first of all, this is where we actually spawned the mob, right? This was um, where was it? Um, our pot. What's our pot? Uh, no, where is it? Infest room R. Ah, yeah, that's that's that was the infest room thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the infest room will is that's where we're actually placing the mobs, right? So here, where where is exactly where are we actually placing the mob? Add mob. There we go. This this guy here. This is where we're adding the mob. This is where the actual mob gets spawned. And so here, instead of the two, that's what's the slime, we're gonna get uh, R and D mob pool. We're getting a random um, random mob from the mob pool. And again, the mob pool is a global uh, variable, so you know you will have access from it in the infest room function where we're actually placing the mobs. Um, I want to test it. Now the problem is the way we're testing is is actually not good. Uh, the way we um, when we push the button we can generate the next floor, but that's actually not good. That's not um, how this should should go. What we can do in do instead is uh, we're going to use the actual function to advance floor. So we're going to go again floor f again floor floor plus one. So now when we push a button, it will actually generate the entire floor. <laughs> and then we immediately in a kielbasa because we set the kielbasa to like a very low number. Uh, so let's set it up to nine again so we can see the entire thing. And also um, we want to maybe uh, show, oh, we're gonna turn off the fog of war for now. Oops, that's wrong, that's wrong, this is so wrong. Let's see here. Okay. Um, so we're not getting any spawns. Why is that so? It took me way too long to track down what the issue is. A very obvious problem. We already created a bunch of mobs, but we haven't actually created the the tiles, the the animation for those mobs. And also, I copied over values from my prototype, and they didn't match up with the values that we have now for uh, for the current mob. So kind of like basically, we're creating mobs. They're just invisible. They're all black. And if you look at it exactly. You will see that some tiles, some some tiles are completely black, and those is, this is where the mobs are now. So um, real quick, import monsters dot png. Import monsters png. There we go. <laughs> I was getting worried for a second there. I, I guess I didn't save correctly. I'm not sure. Okay, so we see now like there's like this is the slime. This is something that we called the melt. This is the shoggoth. This is the mantis man. Uh, this is a um, uh, giant scorpion. Uh, this is the ghost. This is the golem. And this is, I call this Drake. Uh, this is different from the prototype because the I had a bigger dragon in here and it, I didn't quite like it. And again, thank you so much Kirai S for providing the beautiful uh, uh, monsters for this this game. I really enjoy those those guys. There's some, some really cool stuff happening here. You should check out Kirai S's uh, Twitter account. Good, uh, so um, yeah, so if you run this, you will see we now have a bunch of good giant scorpions. That's because, um, uh, again, this, the, um, the numbers that we have here in our game are not quite correct. So let us just fix those numbers quite um, a little bit so we can see if everything's working correctly. We can do it right here. I will do it in a spreadsheet file as well later on. So uh, if I remember. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, this is going to be 192. The next one is going to be 196. 
then it's gonna be uh, 200. I mean, it's always plus four, so 204. We could probably also simplify this 208, 212, 216, uh, 300. No, <laughs> that's not how math works, Christian. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we have now slimes, we have slimes and melts, we have slime melts and shoggoths. Uh, here we have slime, uh, not no longer slimes, but shoggoths, melts, and mantis man. Mantis man, shoggoths, and we don't have the new guy here because I guess accidentally it didn't spawn. Then we have the scorpions in here and a ghost. And this is now the golem and, uh, and two ghosts. Uh, just golems now, and that's gonna be the final. Oh, didn't actually spawn any drakes. Um, one more thing I want to add, and this will basically wrap up our, our function here. Something I don't like <coughs> is how the um, we only sp spawn three mobs. That's not that's not a lot of mobs. It would be nice if we kind of like this min mons. If we, there was a min and max um, that we kind of like. Uh, uh, we kind of like figure out on our own and also I think the num amount of monsters that we spawn in in each room is also something that we, that we can tweak around a little bit. Okay, so here's how we do this. Um, we're gonna have min mons equals uh, Explode val. We're gonna have a, like a lookup table of how many monsters there are gonna be on each individual floor So on the first floor we're gonna have three monsters, but then five. This is the minimum amount of monsters five seven nine Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm kind of like tapering off at the at the end because I think at some point we, there's just so many monsters in there and we might actually tweak those numbers down a little bit. Generally, um, I think there was like this idea that games are supposed to be harder as you go on and uh, there's this really great book by um, the creator of Spelunky uh, who is... Um, Derek Q, and he actually in this book he, he questions that dogma like are why are games supposed to be harder as you go on that doesn't make sense there's it's, it's nice to maybe have like a spike somewhere in, in the middle that you kind of like try struggling to get through but then later maybe the tapers off a little bit uh, I think uh, thinking about difficulty how it gets more difficult is kind of like maybe a bad approach thinking about how it changes how it kind of like modifies how you get maybe you get an arc that's more interesting to think about than just like pure difficulty. It's very easy to make it like super hard, but is it really enjoyable then? Okay, so this is the minimum amount of mobs that we're gonna have. Uh, <clears throat> so the way I had it last time around, and I'm gonna just copy this over, I'm not sure if this will work. I'm gonna have also a max mons. Uh, so there's gonna be two, basically two um, um, arrays. So one will be about the minimum amount of monsters, one will be about the maximum number of amount of monsters. And the idea is that we're gonna cancel um, all of the monsters placing when we reach the maximum amount of monsters and when we reach the minimum amount of monsters that's sufficient but not necessary to continue and the ideas with max monsters right now is always twice the amount of min mons uh, except from the final level yeah max mons and again it tapers off at the end no it doesn't yeah, 24, no, just tapers off together with the months. And again, this is something that we tweak. I think uh, this is just like taking direct from prototype and I think I figured in prototype, the final levels were really difficult to, to um, get through and not really like, there was just no choice for you to, to sometimes you would just die. And um, that was because like you would like, get like, um, uh, the golems that are very difficult to defeat, they would spawn in al in alleys, in um, in the in, the in hallways, and if that happens, there's just no way you can you, know, you cannot get past. Uh, so I would maybe even think about how to uh, how to add maybe some uh, mechanics to kind of like deal with that situation. So instead of min mons, we're gonna go max mons and floor we're gonna use the floor as an index to get like you know the amount of monsters we need to have on on this floor so we're gonna keep spawning monsters until we hit that maximum amount of monsters limit and then is um, after we spawn the monsters and we, if there's still not enough monsters on the floor we're gonna go if placed is smaller than min mob 
I mean months. Floor. Then repeat until placed is greater equals min months floor. Uh, so this is where we're gonna start placing hallway monsters, something I already teased about. Um, so we're just gonna repeat and I, again, this is gonna be, I'm just gonna copy this over so I don't have to type it out. Um, we already seen that before. We're just gonna get a random X and Y value and um, and uh, we're gonna see if it's walkable. Um, so another repeat inside. And then until is walkable, x, y, um, check mobs. Um, yeah, we have to define it outside. Local x, y. Um, and then <clears throat> we can spawn the mob in here. So spawn mob get rend mob pool x. Is it spawn mob? How do I call this? It's called add mob. I changed it a little bit. Okay, so kind of like we, if we haven't hit the minimum amount of mobs that we spawned, we're just gonna start spawning mobs randomly in the entire. Um, so this is how mobs could spam, spawn in the hallway, which makes it even harder. Um, but yeah, there's kind of like that's the approach here. We could like spawn them only in in in, in rooms. So now you can see we spawn a lot of more mon monsters here. And maybe these are not the right numbers. Maybe we kind of have to uh, tweak this a little bit. It's fine. We also haven't aren't really considering the rarity of monsters. So all of the monsters have the same uh, amount of uh, same chance to spawn. Uh, it might be also worthwhile. Like right now, like monsters are constantly cycling in and out. Uh, it might be worthwhile to kind of think about. Okay, maybe at some point, at some floor, all of the old monsters disappear and only new monsters appear. So now we have drakes. Uh, we don't have any hallway monsters though, so that's good. Okay. So this is generally how we well, how we're dealing with the monsters, how we deal with the monster spawning. Is there anything we need yet? I think it's fine. Okay, so this was about monsters. On the next episode, I want us to go through the process of spawning the chests and getting random items. We're gonna use a very similar approach to the way we use the monsters, where we're gonna create a pool, but not of monsters, but of items. And so this will allow us kind of like also, um, you know, spawn only the monster, the, the items that belong on this specific floor, but also make sure that um, uh, items that um, that already spawn somewhere do not spawn again for certain uh, types of items. Uh, the code for this episode is going to be uh, downstairs. Also, the link to the Google spreadsheet that I created, like the preliminary spreadsheet. If you think that some of the numbers on the spreadsheet are not right, please let me know. This is actually uh, this is very important. I like I just like tried some numbers and it seems like we're working but i'm not really sure about the numbers on the latter levels and the numbers are you have to the numbers only make sense in context of the abilities that you have so as soon as we introduce new abilities um we have to go second guess numbers again uh it's going to be about playing this this game a lot and seeing what causes some problems and if we, there's something we can address by tweaking numbers or adding more abilities uh thank you so much for joining me um and check out our Discord channel because the Discord channel is great. And again, thank you so much, Kirai S, for providing monsters. See you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye.